we all have a great time tonight celebrating this. Commemorating the 200th anniversary of Chautauqua County, New York. Whereas it is the intent of this legislative body to honor and commemorate the proud and distinguished histories of the people and communities which comprise the noble body of this great empire state. And whereas it is the purpose of this legislative body to now co commemorate the 200th anniversary of Chautauqua County, New York, to be celebrated throughout the calendar year of 2011. In the many cities, towns, and villages that combine to form the county's identity, and whereas this bicentennial celebration is important to the residents of Chautauqua County because it provides historical, cultural, and artistic opportunities and activities, as well as instills a sense of pride in the communities and county as a whole. And whereas Chautauqua County was first settled in the late 18th century, and the county limits were defined in an act of 1808. The county was required to function as a part of Niagara County until it attained a population of 500 taxable land-owning residents. Chautauqua County was officially recognized as an independent county by the New York State Legislature on February 9, 1811. Imagine that. <clears throat> and whereas the western gateway to the state of New York, Chautauqua County, covers 1,065 square miles containing two cities, 27 towns, and 13 villages. The county has a 50-mile shoreline on Lake Erie and holds six lakes. Chautauqua County was named for its largest lake, which is 20 miles long and 1,308 miles above sea level. Whereas rich in natural resources, Chautauqua County holds over 1,500 commercial farms, more than 15,000 square acres of grapes, and 20 wineries. The French Creek watershed in Chautauqua County is the most biologically diverse riverine system in the Northeast United States and is home to 12 globally rare species and whereas many famous people have called Chautauqua County home including New York State Governors William H. Seward and Reuben Fenton, naturalist Roger Torrey Peterson, Supreme Court Justice and Chief United States Prosecutor at the Nuremberg Trials Robert H. Jackson, entrepreneurs B.F. Goodrich and George Pullman, musician Natalie Merchant, beloved actress Lucille Ball, and numerous other writers, athletes, artists, military heroes, and politicians. And whereas Chautauqua County has long been known as a place of academic opportunity with Jamestown Business College, the State University of New York at Fredonia, and Jamestown Community College, the first community college in New York State. And whereas educational and cultural offerings abound in Chautauqua County through the Chautauqua Institution, which hosts 142,000 participants in its programs each summer. The Roger Torrey Peterson Institute a National Center for Nature Education, the Lilydale Assembly, the World Center of the Universal Religion of Modern Spiritualism. And whereas Chautauqua County is credited with a number of firsts, the first Grange in the world and the first Women's Christian Temperance Union were both formed in Fredonia. The oldest lighthouse on the Great Lakes and the first to be lighted by natural gas still stands at Barcelona Harbor. And the first naval skirmish of the War of 1812 was fought at the mouth of the Canada Way Creek. And whereas 
remaining fruitful over the ebb and flow of decades of growth and change, Chautauqua County continues its commitment to enhancing the quality of life of its citizens, ensuring a positive business, institutional, and educational climate, and providing all essential services. And whereas it is appropriate to not only celebrate the county's origins and history this year, but also to set the right tone and objectives for the next 200 years of Chautauqua County's history. And whereas it is the intent of this legislative body to publicly recognize and honor milestones in the history of communities large and small in this great empire state. Now therefore be it resolved that this legislative body pause in its deliberations to commemorate the 200th anniversary of Chautauqua County and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to Chautauqua County, New York, adopted and Senate, submitted by Catherine M. Young, New York State Senate, 57th Senate District. Yes. Thank you very much, Sandy, for uh, bringing those remarks and uh, giving us an opportunity to really condense our history into some of our more, more notable uh, points. But I'll ask, uh, uh, ask Michelle to come up here for just a moment, because we are going to have an opportunity, to, and she will sure help me uh, go through this. I would like an opportunity for us to recognize those who share the privilege that I currently have in being county executive, who really have laid the foundation and the, the benchmark, in many cases, for what it's like and what the opportunities are as county executives. So for just a moment, I'll give you an idea of who came uh, before me in this particular role. The first uh, was Hall R. Clothier, and um, he was chairman of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Richard Evans uh, was chairman of the Board of Supervisors, and uh, Hall Clothier was for 15 years, from 1948 to 1962. Uh, Richard Evans served from 1962 to 1971. And uh, we have Honorable Joseph Jirasi with us this evening. So, Your Honor, if you come up here, please. Uh, we, have the, we have the unique distinction of recognizing uh, Judge Jirasi because he served as chairman of the Board of Supervisors from 1972 to 1974. And then effective January 1975, this county began operating under a new charter. And the newly created position of Chautauqua County was filled. And you are first elected county executive in Chautauqua County. You served from 1975 until May of 1983, when you resigned this position to take the position uh, with the State Department of Agriculture and Markets as their commissioner. And I want to thank you for that. And you'll say for you some others are going to join you up here as well. Uh, it, to fill Judge Rossi's place in the balance of his term, David Dawson was appointed as interim executive until a special election was held uh, to elect a new county executive. And he could not be here with us this evening. At that special election in, in 1983, John Glenzer became the county executive. He served from 1983 through 1989. So Jack, if you would please also. I know you, I saw you earlier on. If you come on up here, Jack. Following Jack in this role is a gentleman we just we, uh, heard from just moments ago, Andrew Goodell. Andrew was elected as county executive and served from 1990 through 1997. So Andrew, if you'd come back up here, please. Following, following Andrew in this role is Mark Thomas. I know Mark is here. We had a chance to speak just a moment ago. And he began his term in 1998 and served through 2005. And like Andrew, who's currently serving as our assemblyman, uh, Mark Thomas is leading the way as the Western New York Parks Director for the New York State Parks Association. And I'm pleased to have his leadership there as well. Mark, congratulations. Good to see you. I've had the pleasure of joining these gentlemen in this role. And it is a distinct pleasure and honor to do that. And uh, you can see that some bright, talented people really blazed the trail that's allowed us to go forward successfully. So it's, uh, it's great to have these gentlemen join us. And we have a small uh, recognition for that, a certificate of appreciation. And so I'm going to step aside here and uh, join these gentlemen. And Michelle, you want to join as well? On the other side there, we'll kind of look in these, these gentlemen. You can open, yeah, why don't you open those up and show them off.
Thank you very much. Preceding county executives uh, were the chairman of the legislature. And uh, we have uh, a series of these gentlemen that we can recognize this evening. Uh, Frank Bratt served as the legislative chairman from 1975 to 1977. Gordon Anderson served as chairman from 1978 to 1979. And Robert Barber served. Gentlemen, if you're here, please step forward. Served from 1980 to 1983. I saw Robert here earlier. Uh, from 1984 to 1985, Thomas Hart served as chairman of the legislature. And from 1986 to 1987, Robert Stanley served as chairman. Richard Davies, who I saw here earlier this evening, served as chairman from 19, come on up here, Dick, served as chairman from 1988 to 1989, and again from 1996 to 1997. He did a good job the first time around and did a good job the second time. Obviously, welcome back in that leadership role. Lance Spicer served for three terms, from 1990 to 1995. Welcome Lance here as well. Michael Bobsing served from 1998 to 1999. I didn't see if I saw Michael here or not. Jane Fagerstrom served as chairwoman from 2000 to 2001. And Keith Allstrom served as chairman of the legislature from 2002 to 2010. And our current chairman, Fred Crossett, is serving as our chairman beginning uh, last year and continues to serve us there today. And, and I think these gentlemen deserve uh, recognition a round of applause. And We're going to ask Ron Lemon, who recently stepped out of his role as legislator, to introduce our current serving legislators so that they can be recognized as well because of the service that they have provided and will continue to provide going forward. This will be my first time calling the roll. Keith Allstrom, District 1. Sean Heenan, District 2. Robert Dub, District 3. If you could come up to sign the proclamation, Mr. Dub. We have a proclamation for each of them to sign. So as I call your name, if you're here, if you'd come up and sign the, the uh, sheet. George Barello, District 4. <coughs> Jerry Park, District 5. John Runkle, District 6, could not be here. Robert Stewart, District 7. Tammy Downey, District 8. Larry Barmore, District 9. Alias Mr. Prendergast tonight. Mark Tarbright, District 10. 